Races are often won and lost in the pits. Knowing when to duck into the pits and when to stay out on the track, when to take two tires instead of four, and when to do what the pros call short pit, are just three items on the list of skills that you'll need to learn if you want to become an educated racer. Let's go over them one by one. Let's get the most obvious tip out of the way first. It's always better to pit under caution than it is to pit under green flag conditions. If you pit under green, you'll lose at least one lap at most of the tracks. On the other hand, if you pit under yellow, you won't lose a lap unless you're making major repairs to your car. Many times, you'll have no choice but to pit under green, but in general, you'll want to delay that pit stop for as long as you can, because if you pit under green and lose a lap, and then the yellow flag comes out, your opponents will be able to come in, make their stops, and keep you a lap down. Let's say you're racing along and a caution flag comes out. You've still got a decent number of laps to go until you'd normally come in and pit. What should you do? Do you pit and risk dropping to the back of the field? Or do you stay out there and maintain your position? As usual, the answer is, it depends. In this case, it depends on quite a few things. First, how many laps are left in the race? If it's early, it's almost always to your benefit to come in, unless of course you just pitted a couple of laps ago. In addition, if coming in will reduce the total number of pit stops you'll need in order to finish the race, you'll want to do it. As the race progresses, track position becomes more important, so as the laps start to wind down, you'll want to gradually lean more in the direction of not pitting. Second, how are your tires and fuel holding out? If you're close to making a stop anyway, you'll usually want to come in and take advantage of the caution flag. If it's late in the race and you think you'll be able to make it to the end, you may want to stay out there. Third, where are you in the standings? If you're at the front of the field, you're more likely to want to stay out there. On the other hand, if you're near the back of the line, you'll probably want to come in, because you'll need to pass far fewer cars, if any, in order to get back to your old position. Also, if you're at the very end of the line, you may want to come into the pits again as the field goes to one lap to green, just so that you can top off your fuel one more time. If you're going to be at the end of the line anyway, you've got nothing to lose by doing it. Fourth, where are you racing? If you're at a track where it's tough to pass, or where running on worn tires doesn't slow you down that much, you'll want to lean towards staying out. If you're at a track where passing is easy, or where worn tires translate to a big performance penalty, you'll be more likely to come in. Finally, what's everyone else doing? If you're in contention and you see the entire field coming into pit, you're probably going to want to follow suit, because if you don't, all those cars will have fresh tires and will essentially turn you into a sitting duck when the green flag flies. As you can see, it's not always easy to decide whether or not to come in and pit. There's always the chance that coming in and making a stop will put you so far back in the field that you won't be able to catch up to the leaders. And there's always the chance that staying out there will do nothing but ensure that you get blown into the weeds on the restart. The good news is that at least now you know all the factors you'll need to consider when the time comes to make that important call. One of the biggest decisions you'll face when you come into the pits will be how many tires to take. Taking two tires instead of four can cut several seconds off of your pit stop, especially if you're not adding a lot of fuel. By taking just two tires, you can gain a lot of track position, assuming of course that most of your opponents decide to change all four. The downside of taking two tires is that you'll still have a pair of worn tires on the car and that will almost always slow you down especially in the long run. For that reason, it's usually best to consider making a two-tire stop only if it's late in the race. When you're considering taking just two tires, the main question you'll need to ask yourself is whether or not the gain in track position will be offset by the loss in speed you'll experience versus the cars that took four fresh tires. At tracks where it's difficult to pass, you'll be more likely to take two tires simply because it will be easier for you to defend against losing those positions you gained. If you're like most people, chances are good that you won't be running full-length races. Many people like to set up their races to be just long enough to require one pit stop. For example, let's say that a particular track usually requires a pit stop between laps 35 and 40, and the race length has been set to 50 laps. In that case, you may want to do what's called short pitting and come into the pits before tire wear or fuel use force you to come in at the usual time. Why would you want to do this? Well, it's simple, really. You have to make a pit stop anyway, so you might as well try to time it so that you're minimizing the total number of laps that you're on worn tires. So, using the example of the 50 lap race, you'd want to come into the pits right around halfway, or lap 25. 
course, this strategy can be very dangerous during races with yellow flags because it makes it easy for a poorly timed caution to put you a lap down. However, if you're racing with yellows turned off, you'd really be crazy not to do it. There's one final little bit of pitting strategy that's worth mentioning. If you're running for the championship, you'll get five bonus points for leading a lap. Sometimes the best way of getting those points is during a caution period, when all the cars in front of you decide to head for the pits. By staying out on the track, you can lead a lap and get credited with the bonus. Of course, the downside to doing this is that if you need to make a stop during that caution period, you'll have to do it on the following lap. By that time, the field will have caught back up to you. By the time you come in, pit, and come back out, you'll usually find yourself at the very back of the field. This may seem like a heavy price to pay for a measly five points, but if it's early in the race, or if there aren't a lot of cars on the lead lap, it can be a smart move, especially if you're off the pace and you think it's only a matter of time before you get put a lap down.